All right, what's up guys, Brad here. Today we're gonna be doing a showcase for Marvel Snap. So this deck is kind of like a hazmat disrupt uh, Black Widow deck. I don't, I don't really know how to name these decks. Um, so essentially my idea is to give them crappy cards and uh, to fill their location with stuff that doesn't have a lot of power or um, you know just disrupts them in general, right? Makes sense. So uh, turn one, they play for some reason Quicksilver in Jotunheim, which makes them lose one power so we decided to play colossus because colossus doesn't lose any power no matter what so colossus is a perfect card um works out great here and uh we see onslaught citadel comes down and, and for the middle location and now hell's kitchen is the final one on the right hand side so we got a couple options and the obvious one is going to be bishop being that uh on turn three and we have a lot of small minions in this deck so you're talking about the highest is three cost. So the top three cards um, for the high end are Bishop, Wolfsbane, and Swordmaster. So here we go. This is essentially the combo I was talking about. So what I want to do is play Black's Widow and give them the Widow's Bane, which then makes it so they can't draw a card. And then we're going to give them Black Widow so they have a one power guy on their side of the board. So they end up playing Jubilee, which could have been a little scary and they pull Lady Sif, which is not as scary, and it kills their Odin. So now we're gonna be playing Hazmat, because right now they have two, four, six cards on the field, and we're gonna be giving minus one power to them. So let's minus six, and we're only getting minus two. And on top of that, they also have initiative, which means that they possibly, depending on what they play, could get even uh, a bigger hit as well. So. We decided to go with uh, Hazmat, Ant-Man, and Iceman in the middle location because uh, the ongoing effect here is are doubled. So Ant-Man gets plus six power instead of just plus three. And Iceman comes down, we're hitting one of their cards, and they play Devil Soar, Devil Dinosaur, right? Which is pretty scary, but at the same time, not too scary as they do have the, uh, the Widowmaker in their hand and I believe that's what's called, right? Yeah, the Widowmaker. <laughs> I had a moment there. So for some reason they didn't play it, so they don't get another card. So I guess either way it didn't really matter too much, but I still would have played it if I were them. Uh, we decided to go in and play Swordmaster and Scorpion. Not that Scorpion really matters, but uh, we get eight power with Bishop, nine over there, uh, and 12. So we ended up winning all three locations. I feel like they misplayed that a little bit themselves though. <clears throat> All right, here we are, game three with our Disrupt deck, and we are going to be seeing what we get. So Iceman and Nightcrawler, but we get Hell's Kitchen, which draws us a one-cost card, which is why we got Nightcrawler, and then Nikoya was our next draw. So we already know, a lot of times I don't like playing anything on one, so uh, Akoi is by far best turn two play we could possibly have. They drop Squirrel Girl, which um, I don't see the value in that card, and I think it's more negative than positive, honestly. But Squirrel Girl comes down, and it just makes our Hazmat that much more juicy. So right now, I'm looking at turn three, Hazmat into Iceman. So uh, we already know they're getting minus four, plus they have initiative. So that means that depending on what they play, we can even get even more cards to hit, right? So minus four at minimum, and then uh, whatever they play. So And they play Mr. Sinister, which gives us minus six power on their end. And we only get minus one. That's a huge swing for us, right? This is why I really like to play this hazmat. Um, I think it's just pretty fun. It's interesting. It's a different way to think about the game. So now we've got two options of Swordmaster into Ant-Man or Black Widow into Scorpion. I personally like to wait with Ant-Man until a little bit later on in the game. So uh, I decided to go with Black Widow on one end and Scorpion on the other. And this is a real juicy combo, guys. So Black Widow gives the Widow's Bite, which is zero cost, zero power, and they don't draw a card next turn, right? But on top of that, now it's negative one power. So they have to play this card in order to draw a card for their final turn six play. Really, really sucks for them. But uh, we decided to get that down. So we decided to play Ant-Man on the left hand side and Wolfsbane on the right pretty much guaranteeing a win on the right hand side and especially with Swordmaster on the left we could see the game seems pretty easy in the bag for us oh, uh, we decided to snap and throw Colossus in the middle for fun 
right? And let's see what they play. So they play Forge, which, you know, basically is them giving up that location. Widow's Bite now has one power because of Forge, and then Bishop as well, um, which is the wrong way to play, I guess so. Maybe they're new, or it's a bot or something, but either way. So there is another game for you guys. All right, so here we go once again, and let's see what we end up drawing. As usual, never play a man on turn one. Um, they play Quicksilver, so let's see. We get runes in the middle, and now turn two. We got a Koi. We drew a Koi right off the top. That is a big top deck for us. So Domino also gets played here. Um, I'm guessing this is like kind of like a bigger deck. So usually I play Quicksilver and Domino for turn one, turn two. And then I want to play either like Wave um, into like a Jubilee or something. Like something big, right, in general. That's usually how I play those cards. So right now I'm kind of debating. We got um, cards cost one less as a location. So we can really do whatever we want right now. We got so many options. So I'm thinking we drop Hazmat, then we drop the Black Widow and Colossus down because why not? And you know what, on top of that, let's just go all in on the left location. A little bit risky, but we decided to do it anyways. Um, it gives them a lot of turns to really figure out and try to win that left location. But I'm kind of feeling a little, a little ballsy here, so why not? So 13 power in that left location. So we got both Swordmaster and Wolfsbane. So I decided to uh, play both of them. So not the biggest Wolfsbane we could possibly have, but still not terrible. And we're trying to win the Devil Dinosaur location. So there goes Gamora into Widow's Blight. So Gamora already know that they're not getting that uh, on reveal effect off, but still, I guess it is a pretty big one. They're pretty much guaranteeing to win that location, especially with the Punisher there. So. They get a nice win. Um, this is honestly going to be pretty close. I, I don't know how it's going to roll here. So Scorpion comes down just because that was all we really could do. And then Jubilee, which pulls Deathlock. <laughs> so that kills their guys. I don't know why you'd play Deathlock in uh, this deck here. But it, because of that mistake, it actually wins us the game. Victory. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, videos. Let me know if you want to see more of these. Like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.